Yes, indeed. You know what time it is. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai? I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, whom the world ignorantly has been calling Jesus Christ for centuries now, ignorantly. Uh, we give true praise and honor to His true name. This is it, man. A month. I inquire first name. My IQ is all the same. Don't shoot the messenger. DSTM number 87. It's a hump day. How's everybody doing? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Uh, halfway through your week of hell. Six days of labor. You know what I mean? Um, we're at the precipice of uh, making it close to our uh, day of rest. And uh, the world is continually spinning. Right? So you see that you see the name. I mean, you see the title. Forty eight hours later, ain't no missiles got launched. Any surprises? I hope not. I gave a uh, pretty uh, fair assessment on how these war games have been playing out and a lot of the uh, theatrics that's been happening. Um, you know, over the past few months, in particular, last uh, Sabbath, which was DSTM number eighty five. I told everybody, don't be surprised if there's bombs and don't don't be surprised if there's not. Um, you know, Meta Monday, DSTM 86, spoke about it again. There's been a whole lot of political theater and posturing going on. Um, a lot of lies, mis you know, misinformation. There's a lot of things that's going on. But one thing for sure, two things for certain, is that the Most High is not a man that he should lie. Let's get that in the, in the book of uh, Numbers. Number 20. Yeah, there we go. One thing for sure, two things for certain. Let me share my screen. Make sure you wiped your feet on that map, man. You came up in here. If you didn't wipe your feet, shame on you. But if you did, I appreciate you. The water. Uh, but if you haven't, man, do your brother a favor. Wipe your feet on the mat. All right. And uh, hit that like button. But um, let's look at this. Numbers 23, 19, classic scripture, right? The Most High is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So when the Most High puts it down and he lays something down prophetically, and we read about it through the scriptures, and we see things unfolding, and we constantly seeing time elapsing according to the word of the Lord, know that the Most High is going to make good on everything that he said. So again, it's on his timing. It's on his timing when everything unfolds. You know, what, what we're looking at is, uh, uh, you know, the word was out that, um, you know, Putin has withdrawn his troops, seeking further diplomacy, wants to talk some more, talk it out. Uh, however, there's contradictory reports saying that he's not doing that, that he's actually adding more troops and so is NATO. So is it over? Do we chalk it up and just say, oh, that, that was all BS, fear mongering, man. They, they playing games. Ain't nobody going to war. We don't know that because the Most High is not a man that he should lie. Now, if he's talking, if the Most High told us that there's going to be a third world, if he told us that there was going to be wars and rumors of wars, if he told us that there was going to be uproars of the people and so forth and so on, and he hasn't made good on it, then there's a problem. But clearly we see the Most High is making good on everything that he said. Right? Let's look at Amos 3. Amos 3, and uh, let's look at verse 6, right? So it says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord have not done it? Surely the Most High Yahweh will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. See? So the Most High, you know, he's blowing the trumpet. He's getting our people awakened. You know, that's what they're calling this whole new uh, past two years. You know, since the vid, pandemic, and everything else. They're calling it a great awakening. You know, that's where you get the hashtag, the woke, and everything else. Because of the consciousness of the people that's starting to arise. I'm speaking to the people of Israel. I'm not talking about this fake thing, this fake woke hashtag movement uh, that's been hijacked by these, um, you know, uh, armchair revolutionaries and this, uh, you know, this, this, this fake woke committee that's being headed up and funded by 
rich white men to motivate and to uh, uh, mobilize so-called blacks and Hispanics and, and uh, hippie whites to run around here to promote their vegan diets, to promote, you know, uh, so-called equality and against police brutality and feminism and sodomite agendas and everything. I'm not talking about that. We talking about the real woke agenda as it pertains to the children of Israel waking up out of that slumber of sleep. The Trump has been blown. The most high showing this all day long, how that his word is true. Famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, wars, rumors of wars. I mean, you name it, racial tensions and warfare going on, uproars to the people, um, uh, floodings, tempest storms. I mean, it's all happening. So the Trump has been blown in the city. The people are going to learn to be afraid, you know? So it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time. So while we're doing this and while we're while we're looking, let's see where the time is at then. All right. So don't fret. Don't say, ah, damn, I was looking forward to war on Wednesday. It, like I said on Monday, I would hope that that went down, but it's all on the most high's timing. Even if I'm not ready, even if I don't have my family completely ready, we're faithfully locked into this thing. But you never know. You know, if the most I said that there's going to be a, a, a cataclysm on this earth like never before, I believe that's in Daniel, the 12th chapter, parent kind of uh, paraphrasing. Let me see if that's it. Kind of paraphrasing, right? Um, let's look at this here in Daniel 12. And, 1. and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. So Micah Allah. The archangel, head of the Lord of host, you know, head of the host of heavens. He's going to stand up for the children of Israel. OK, and there's a and you read about that, the war that, you know, so-called white man is going to try to declare in, in, in Revelation 12 chapter. Right. This is what we're talking about. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Do you understand that? That's why I say, I can say I'm faithfully ready, but listen, how can you be ready for something that is n nobody's ever experienced before in life? That's the type of thing we're talking about right now. Add up the wars, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Spanish-American War, uh, the Civil War. Add up all the great wars that David, you know, that David fought and the, and the great wars in the, in the judges and what, I mean, there's nothing that we can compare this to. So again, are you ready? Am I ready? Who's to say? See, <laughs> didn't, it, didn't the Most High tell us in Amos? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, for what end is it shall, shall it be unto you? So prayerfully, we you know we get a little extension on this time to repent and uh, you know seek the face of the Most High ten times the more. So that we can try to make sure that we get this thing all the way right. Because what's coming? Again, there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thou, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. And that's what we're working hard to, man. Trying to solidify our names in, the, in, the, in that book. So that we can be found worthy of the salvation of the Most High. Everlasting life. You know, servants and handmaids, dry eyes, no more emotional, you know, uh, depressions and all that other stuff. You know, true possessions of lands, peoples, you know, full spectrum dominance as it pertains to this earth. Getting our inheritance truly back. That's what we're working for, man. And keep our name. Get my name in that book. Get your name in this good book. You know, my son's a wife, so forth and so on. We're trying to get our names in that book. Book of Deliverance, man. So because of the fact that, hey, missiles didn't go off on Wednesday, you guys, you, you, you didn't know what you're talking about. I didn't say that. I'm reading the press releases. And that was all a possibility, but it's not off the table. Let's look at this. 
Now Putin plays a peacemaker amidst doubts over his theatrical withdrawal. See, it's theater. That's what they're saying, right? It's all political theater, man. Don't know, don't know which one of these damn devils is telling the truth. They're all doing posturing. They're all acting. They all got script writers. They all doing the same thing. Hyping up market, you know, the financial markets, uh, down in the markets, you know, trying to crash economy, cyber attacks. Here. It's all going down. So this was uh, as of yesterday, right? Putin plays a peacemaker amid doubts over his theatrical withdrawal. Russian strongman claims he, of course, doesn't want war, but accuses Kiev of genocide as West warns he is still plotting an invasion. So you see what they're saying? They basically saying they playing their own game. You know, trust but verify. Uh, when he speaking fair, believe him not. Seven abominations. Esau knows himself. See, the other Edomites, man, and NATO and everything else. They saying, well, we know how we lie. We know how we get down. So even though he's he's saying he he doesn't want war, we can't trust that because the seven abominations is hard because we would say the same thing. <laughs> Esau, man, it's something else. All right, so check this out. Putin says he's ready, quote, ready to go down the negotiations track with the West after weeks of mountain tensions. Russian strongman insisted he, of course, doesn't want war despite massing troops on Ukraine's border. But he repeated claim that genocide is underway in breakaway, breakaway regions of the Ukraine and insists their future must be part of security talks underlining how far apart the two sides still are. How far apart the two sides still are. Keep that in mind. He spoke hours after Moscow announced some troops will be withdrawn from front lines to their home bases. Quote, withdrawal greeted with optimism and skepticism amid warnings Russia could still invade at short notice. So it's not off the table. Everybody's still moving like an invasion is possible. It just didn't go down the way that it was getting hyped up to be. You know, remember that one cat that uh, I brought out last uh, Sabbath? He was an anonymous source who didn't have the authority to speak publicly and couldn't confirm or deny his sources. See, that's how sometimes you get, you know, these little media plants that pop up in there and say, well, I, I've got a source that told me this. And you say, well, who, who's the source? I, I can't speak on that. And they could be making the whole damn thing up. Either to escalate or to de-escalate or to throw more shade on the other side to make it look like it's coming from them. You know what I mean? It's all kind of, it's all kind of games going on. So let's finish this up. Vladimir Putin played magnanimous uh, peacemaker today, insisting that quote, he of course doesn't want war in Ukraine hours after announcing a theatrical withdrawal of some of his forces while massing tens of thousands of troops along the border. The strong man speaking at the Kremlin alongside, Ger alongside German chancellor, Olaf Schloss, uh, said he is ready to go down the negotiation track to engage over issues such as arms control, transparency around military drills, and other measures aimed at reducing sky-high tensions between the East and the West. Russia's apparent withdrawal is being treated with extreme skepticism in the West, where intelligence agencies suspect uh, is could be part of a ruse to launch a smaller military operation in the regions of the U eastern Ukraine where Russian separatists are fighting. Let's look at this next one. So NATO weighs new combat units for Central and Southeast Europe. What are they talking about? So in Brussels, this is today, NATO told its military commanders on Wednesday to draw up plans for new combat units in Central and Southeastern Europe as it accused Russia of sending, uh -oh, sending more troops to areas near Ukraine instead of withdrawing its forces. You see that? So who's telling the truth? Are troops being withdrawn out or has Russia actually sent more? Separately, a senior Western intelligence official said Russian military exercises were at their peak stage and the risk of Russian aggression against the Ukraine will remain high for the rest of February. Oh, so now they extended it, huh? 
That, that was always the plan anyway. I've covered a couple of stories and shared, shared that with brothers and sisters back in January. Back in uh, December, they were saying that they were expecting the war to go hot in either January or February. And then it got into January and they were saying sometime in February. Then we're in February. Then they're saying, oh, after the um, Olympics. Then they were saying, oh, by the 16th. So everything is still going according to schedule. They're still saying, stay alert. We're still in the month of February. It can still go down. The combat units or, quote, battle groups could be set up in Romania, Bulgaria, Hungary, and Slovakia, diplomats said, in what would be the biggest shift in NATO's military posture since it moved troops in the Baltics and Poland following Russia's annexation of Crimea from the Ukraine in 2014. Okay, so, you know, the uh, the aspect of war is still on deck. Let's see what this cat's talking about. The aspect of war is still here. Just because it didn't happen today, missiles didn't get launched. That means that the threat isn't still there. Look at these weirdos. We have uh, heard the signs from Moscow about... Uh readiness to continue diplomatic uh, efforts but so far uh, we have not uh, seen any de-escalation on the ground on the contrary uh, it appears that russia continues the military build-up so it remains to be seen uh, whether uh, there is a, a russian withdrawal uh, we are of course monitoring very closely uh, what russia does in and around the ukraine um, uh, what we see is that uh, they have increased the number of uh, troops uh, and uh, more troops are on their way. Uh, so, uh, so far, no de-escalation. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, we, we, we hear also the message about, about diplomacy and, and we are ready to engage uh, in diplomatic efforts with Russia. Mr. Schultz yesterday has said... They have always moved forces back and forth. Uh, so, uh, just that we see movement of forces, so battle tanks doesn't uh, uh, confirm a real withdrawal. So, in other words, he's acknowledging same. Russia is always moving um, troops, tanks around that area. Now they're accusing it, saying that, well, that means that they haven't withdrawn. I mean, if they're operating business as usual... So, you know, who's really pushing the war? Again, NATO was trying to punk Russia. And Russia's like, we can't back down. But we don't want to go there. So if y'all want to talk, let's talk. Otherwise, I need to get ready. So war is still on the table, y'all. It's still on the table. All right. Let's look at this. Now, we just seen a scene from 12 Monkeys. No, I'm sorry, not 12 Monkeys. Um, uh, uh, outbreak happened a couple of weeks ago. Remember that? The van with the monkeys coming from Kenya, crashed in Philly. Woman gets sick. You know, they're, they're hush hush on any further developments on that, right? Fluorona. Delta crime, uh, you know, the, the um, 46 variants that they found in France. You know, as they're telling everybody, oh, we're getting back to normal. Things are getting, oh, Chris Gold is leaving. You know, yeah, you can take off the mask. Remember, it's political posturing. Slow Biden and the Democrats are, are taking big L's all around the, um, the political spectrum. Midterm elections is coming up. He's already on record saying he wants to get out and do some 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 grassroots kissing babies and all that other madness because he needs to get the people back on on, on track and on his on his team again. So uh, you're gonna go. People's gonna go over the next six months or so. Gonna feel a little bit more free and liberated and have that essence of oh we're getting back to normal. But let's not forget, he's always got bullets in the chamber. Look what look what's going on in Kentucky and Virginia. 
Highly lethal bird flu found in Kentucky and Virginia. Flocks raising fear of a wider outbreak in poultry farms. Uh Uh-oh. You know you Negroes love chicken. Poultry operations in Kentucky and Virginia were confirmed to have birds infected with a highly lethal form of avian flu. Federal agriculture officials said Monday, days after a flock of turkeys in Indiana tested positive, raising worries about a wider outbreak in the country. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. The most recently identified infections occurred at a Tyson Foods uh, commercial broiler in Fulton County, Kentucky, that has 240,000 chickens in the backyard flock of mixed species in Fauquier County, Virginia. Kentucky officials said they were also waiting for the results of tests on a flock of turkeys in Webster County. The infections come after 29,000 turkeys were destroyed in Indiana. Once officials detected the presence of highly pathogenic avian influenza, or HPAI, uh, last week in Du Bois County. Federal officials said the Indian Indiana outbreak was the first confirmed case in commercial poultry in the United States since 2020. So, you know, here we have another um, uh, outbreak going on. Worst case scenario, bird flu kicks in. And uh, it, it, it creates a whole nother pandemic hype. Best case scenario, uh, this is going to affect the uh, poultry prices. So chicken is going to go up because it's going to be even more scarcity. Right? So there's really no good coming out of this either way. Okay? So be on the lookout for continuing stories regarding uh, possible bird flu coming around and uh, how that's going to affect the economy as if we're not already in deep shit. The bird flu outbreak in Israel kills more than uh, 500, so like 5,200 cranes with mass and culling of poultry underway. Avian influenza is carried by a wild bird population that spread the virus to domestic birds. Outbreaks involving more viral and strange result in a higher mortality rate in domestic birds, potentially causing disruptions to the food supply. The outbreak in Fulton County was found after the operation reported an increase in poultry deaths to Kentucky officials. So, bird flu is out, right? Let's look at this. In the West, we it's still in a mega drought, man. We got we got a little bit of rain. Yet, uh, what was it yesterday? Yeah, I mean, d- 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 barely drizzles. Me- mega drought worsens to its driest in at least twelve hundred years. That's biblical. Do you understand that? That is biblical. What, what are we talking about? Uh, let me see. Is it? Jeremy? Uh, 1,200 years we're talking about how bad this this, this drought has been. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Jeremiah 50. Yes, Jeremiah 50. And look, look, look what happened to ancient Babylon, what's happening to, to, to current Babylon now. A drought is upon Jeremiah uh, 50, 38. A drought is upon her waters and they shall be dried up for it is the land of graven images and they are mad upon their idols. Well, guess what we're talking about? What places we just seen graven images uh, being idolized and worshiped at the Super Bowl just this past Sunday. You know, these men spend their blood, sweat, and tears, man, willing to go the, the extra mile, putting illegal substances in their bodies so that they can try to heighten their athletic prowess, all for the glory of getting that ring and getting that trophy, which they all going to kiss at the end of the day. They all want to, you know, I think in hockey, they all get to keep the keep the uh, the trophy for um, 
Everybody gets to keep it in their house for like a day or something like that. And they got to pass it around. You know, all in all in the name of idols. You're looking at your idols when you're looking at the cart and you, all, all of the commercials that get set up so that the idols can be placed in, in one's mind and what they want to desire, what they're looking at, the new tech, what they're looking at to be the next thing that they're going to sacrifice it all to go buy and purchase. They're looking at their musical idols playing on the halftime uh, halftime um, shows, let alone this is a place where you can be what you want, do what you want, worship what you want. Uh, you know, anything goes here. And now we see why the Most High said, this land has to be hit with a drought, especially here on the West. You know, with Hollywood and so forth and so on, man, a lot of things, the imagery, idolatry all emanates out of this place because this is where central command is when it comes down to the imagination and the visual aspects that can come hollywood is the ones that's going to go out there and perform the miracles you know everybody should kind of be aware about the holly tree and its connection with hollywood and witchcraft maybe i'll maybe i'll aim to it today i'm sure Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not. I don't know. I'm just going to look real quick. Uh, whatever, the first thing pops up because they're all going to tell you the same thing. See, this, this is just Wikipedia. Holly Wood, see, makes very good wands which can be used to banish unwanted entities and command and evoke spirits. Holy planted near a uh or holly a uh, planted near a home is said to repel poison and protect from witchcraft and lightning the wood was the power to tame animals and the powers it's like and the flowers to freeze water herbal water made by the holly has protective properties you know look hollywood is a substance used by the druids of ancient england ancient druids cut branches from holly trees which they fastened into magic wands used for casting spells this spell casting was a uh, pat ca casting with magic wands continues to this day in the form of Hollywood movies. Okay, so we we see all of this madness. Magical properties. And this is a bad picture. The specs is too low on that. I mean, but you you, you see what's associated with it. Look at Laura Daligan's witchcraft diaries, magical trees, the holly. And then we sit back and say, well, wh why is California getting hit with the drought? Why is California getting constantly hit with, with the fires? Why is California getting hit with the earthquakes? Why is California being told that, uh, you know, stay out unless you don't want to get purged? Why is California saturated with um, the deaths of the so-called blacks and Hispanics through gangbanging and, and crack culture? Why was California the place that um, the CIA decided that uh, crack and cocaine need to be infiltrated in to destroy the neighborhoods and to destroy families. Because this place is laden with iniquity. And the land of graven images. You can, go, you can go to Hollywood right now and go to the Wax Museum and go see all the graven images of your favorite Hollywood stars and, and your favorite um, uh, musicians. You can take that walk of fame and all the all the uh, the pentagram stars that's on the ground in Hollywood. Your walk of fame where you see your your, the, your, your famous, famous icons of, of Hollywood and entertainment. As you walk around and you look at the stars on the ground, the pentagram, satanic stars. You understand? So now we see why there's a drought going on here. They are mad upon their idols. Don't they have the show Idol American Idol? See? People going crazy over their idols. You can't tell them nothing. About their little lucky rabbit's foot. Can't tell them nothing about, you know, uh the 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 the, the lucky ticket that they got going to the racetrack down in Santa Anita. I don't even know if that's still around. Is they still racing horses in Santa Anita? Who knows? I know Hollywood Park. They used to write racehorses now. They they swap one one damn spot out for the next 
and put up the Ram Stadium. And the Clippers is building a stadium right now. So drought is here. And now we see in here, dry as in 1,200 years, man. You know, they say you, a, a, a body can't go without water, you know, can can go without water up to 72 hours before the body starts eating on itself, man, completely dehydrates, and you end up f- facing, um, you know, severe consequences unless your body's been trained to kind of fast and, you know, move in a, in a, in a fashion to extend that time. But the average person, after 72 hours without water, man, uh, severe dehydration kicks in, man, and organ failure and everything else. So imagine what's that what's that what's that doing to the land? What's that doing to the earth? You understand? How's that affecting the earth here? You know? Let's type in. See. Isaiah, Isaiah 24 and 4. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. See, the earth is in mourning right now. And it's slowly fading away. Why? Because we're starting to see a a depletion of minerals. And we're seeing a depletion of nutrients that's coming from the soils. Everything is lacking right now. Let me see if I can find an article on that. Because I do remember. I brought out an article a while back. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's look at this. Where is this? Uh, see, uh, there's a few of them. But we see. I'm trying to see if I can find a decent one. Let's just look at this one real quick. Some startling numbers of mineral and soil depletion are below. As long as the important soil report from Earth Summit in 1992 provides the results in the uh, table below. Percentage of mineral depletion from soil during the past 75 to 85 years. North America is at 85% depleted from minerals. South America, 76%. Asia, 76 Africa, 74 Europe, 72 And Australia, only 55%. The depletion of important minerals has continued downward, downward over the past 25 years. All right. I mean, I'm not going to go too, too, too in depth in this, but you get the point. The earth is mourning and fading away. You know, this is why the so-called white man is coming up with the GMOs. This is why he's coming up with the, um, you know, the lab grown uh, meats and everything else, because he's depleted all minerals. He's constantly pillaging and plundering the earth. He hasn't even given the earth its, its, its Sabbath. We know that the earth is supposed to have a Sabbath, right? Leviticus 25. I believe it's 25. Look at this. 25. Let's start at verse 1. And the Most High spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune vineyard, and gather the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Most High. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy, un, of the, uh, of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. See, the, the so-called white man, he has no respect for the land. He's constantly building upon, pillaging and plundering, 
digging and fracking, looking for more oil, looking for more resources, more power, more things to enhance his kingdom. The earth itself is, is worn out now. Most I said, man, every seventh year, you to leave the land alone. Give it a chance to replenish. Give it a chance to recuperate. Give it a chance to reinvigorate its, its own um, molecular structures or whatnot. But what's he do? Constantly pillage and plunders every damn thing. To where now the earth doesn't even yield up proper minerals. And it's going down. Down, down, down. All right. So we're in the midst of a major drought right now. America's West mega drought deepened so much last year that is now it is now the driest in at least 1,200 years. And is a worst case climate change scenario playing out live. A new study finds a dramatic drying in 2021 about as dry as 2002 and one of the driest years ever recorded for the region. Pushed the 22-year drought past the previous record holder for mega droughts in the late 1500s and shows no sign of easing in the near future, according to a study Monday in the journal uh, journal Nature Climate Change. Um, you remember they were um, paying farmers not to water their lands and and to shut down their agricultural uh, businesses because they didn't they they were such a shortage on water. They were paying the farmers. I don't know if y'all caught that 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 story that I brought out in DSM a while back. So that that again wrecks the food supply. That creates a scarcity. That creates higher cost of goods. You know, the increase of water. You know, out here in California, I know they they was I don't think they've imposed it yet, but or it might still be going on. But they were laying out fines. You could only water your lawns on on certain days. You know, uh, they were regulating how long, you, you, you know, people were using, uh, utilizing water, showers and all the other stuff in certain uh, areas, especially up north. So now when you're looking at a natural resource that comes from the Lord being depleted, this is why, you know, the wicked man has to get out of his throne. He got he got to get up out of here, man. The so-called white man. That's why he always said, said, man, the time must be short and let, let no flesh be saved. You leave it in his hands, man. Everybody gonna die. Everybody's gonna die. You leave it to the so-called white man. Look at this. Matthew 24 and 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See, that's what we're on the hunt for. We're trying to, you know, establish and get an understanding of the elect uh, of Israel so that the salvation of our people can draw nigh. And the days have to be shortened because leave it to the so-called white man, he's going to kill everybody. Through his means of war, through his destructions of the earth, the food supply, the water, the air, you name it, everything is going to hell in a handbasket fast under his under under his ruling regime. And, you know, the progressive can run around here and they can talk about, oh, well, what about science? You know, we wouldn't have the Internet. We wouldn't have um, um, uh, whatever else they want to talk about. The advancements that they've made and how much progress we've made. But is it all to the good? I can't tell. You know? So, let's finish this up real quick. The study calculated that 42% of this mega drought can be attributed to human-caused climate change. Of course, it's always the humans. But who's the humans doing it? The damn so-called white man. He's the one punching holes in the ozone layer, trying to get rockets out, out in outer space and satellites and everything else. He's the one that created all of these gas emissions, chewing up the chewing up the cars. He's the one, I mean, if climate change is even a, a, a thing, all I know is he's destroying the earth. We know that much. Look at this in Revelation. Most of says he's going to destroy him that hurt the earth. Uh, is it Revelation? Oh, that was that scripture. Oh. <clears throat> I 
I want to say it's a revelation. I don't know. And uh, one second, y'all. My bad. Mm-hmm. Damn, I'm drawing a blank. Um. Ah, dang it. It, it'll come to me. Uh, I could have sworn. That's okay. I, I'll find it later. I'll find it later. Uh, so, I mean, we see, we see here, man, that the uh, destruction is imminent for the so-called white man because as he's sitting out here dictating policy, um, and he's claiming that it's because of human caused climate change. Well, he's the, he's the one that's doing it. He's the human that's done it. You know, it's all based upon what what he's established. See, climate change is changing the baseline conditions toward a drier, gradually drier state in the West, and that means the worst case scenario keeps getting worse. Uh, says study lead author Park Williams, a climate hydrologist at UCLA. This is right in line with what people were thinking of in the 1900s as a worst case scenario. But today, I think we need to be even preparing for conditions in the future that are far worse than this. So if you can only imagine, man, a drought already, that's the worst it's ever been in 1,200 years. And he's saying it's only going to get worse. Only going to get worse. Meanwhile, we're, we're experiencing a drought. Brazil, they're getting hit with floods. I mean, it's happening... <laughs> simultaneously says the trump had been blown in the city and the most high that hadn't done it look at least 44 are killed in brazil as floods and landslides sweep through rio de janeiro tourist spot desperate hunt for survivors after 10 inches of rain fell in three hours the brazilian city of petropolis was struck by a deluge and there are fears the number of dead could rise the state fire department said the area saw just over 10 inches of rain fall within three hours on Tuesday. Video showed cars and houses being dragged away by landslides and water swirling through Pet uh, Petropolis. Governor Claudio Castro said all the state government's heavy machinery was being used to find survivors. Mm -mm -mm. We get in the drought. Look at this. I mean, you're talking apocalyptic. It looked like a bomb that hit it. That's just from a mudslide. Now, the power of the Lord is real. I mean, look at how easy the most I can just wipe out a whole ma mass amount of land and people's homes. 40, 44 people dead. They're still looking for survivors. Look at him. See, that's why the most I didn't. Didn't we just say? It's going to be evil in the city and the most I going to make the fear of the pe come, out, come upon the people. Uh, that was Amos three, three to one more time. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city? See that, that flood, that's a trumpet. Trump has been blown and the people not be afraid. Look at his, look at his face. That's a, that's fear. Shock and awe. You know, these people in here, say, you, if they ain't fear the most high yet, they will. They will. Shall there be evil in the city and the most high have not done it? The most high does these things in order to produce judgment, to instill fear in his people, to make us to repent and seek his face. Embaixo da lama. E a água Embaixo segue descendo do morro, né? Foi muita chuva. Não se sabe quantas pessoas ficaram sem casas, não se sabe ainda o total de pessoas sem abrigo. 
as sirenes da cidade, Silvana, tocaram em todas as áreas, todas as fora. áreas de risco. Oh, mais mais com a grande quantidade, né, com o índice pluviométrico, com a intensidade das chuvas. Nós, a... O grande porte do Brasil só aceita o problema da ocupação de ordenada do solo. E a gente mais uma vez se solidariza com o povo de Petrópolis e... e puxando, o que ela está fazendo? Ela está procurando a filha. Porque as pessoas, Fachão, quando vem, né, a, a, o morro vem abaixo, você... Os termos de apoio, que são as nossas escolas, já servem, inclusive, como ponto de referência para essas famílias, quando elas se encontram, né? É, até por, por isso a gente tem muito menos situações que, que normalmente se tem. Então, lançamos agora... Eu vou também, ô Silvana e Fachão, a Estrada Essas União Indústria... Essas três horas de trabalho. A Estrada União Indústria, ela liga Floresta e Caxambu, o bairro de Floresta three hours, e Caxambu. Fácil, e o que a gente vê é isso aí, olha só muro da casa, né? Então, com alegria, né? Andam para fazer suas fotos de recordação. Hoje é o retrato do desespero da dor e da. Isso aí também. Thanks. Look. Look here. Yeah, you, you better cry to the Lord. This is why people need to repent. Because the Most High is going to keep hammering and hammering us, man, until we actually learn. That he is Yahweh the Almighty, self existent power of the universe, our Father who art in heaven. See? This is gonna make our people wake the hell up. You're gonna have to. So, we see that. All right, look at that. Come on, we're not doing no ads. Let's go. Online shopping is happening 24-7, and you need to keep up. Even when you're, well... Can you imagine? It's like raging waters and roaring rivers, you know. Three hours. So, I think the point is made, right? We point needed a new home in a very okay. dry climate. And with so, while we're still talking about, you know, just to double back on the aspect of war, we've talked about it. It seemed like every damn um, DSTM of late. Constant cyber attacks going on. Look at this. And, then, and we talked about the cyber polygon going on. All the, little, the, all the little cyber tests and everything else, cyber security tests happening that they said was going to be, they was going to start mobilizing and start putting out there. But now look what happened. So is, is, is warfare still going on right now? Are we not under even, at least a cyber war? Missiles ain't had to be launched. Cyber attacks knock out sites of Ukrainian army major, and major banks. And the major banks. So now, uh, look what... Look what we're looking at. A series of cyber attacks on Tuesday knocked the websites of the Ukrainian army, the defense ministry, and major banks offline. <laughs> 
So while they're saying uh, Putin was backing away, uh, here we are seeing cyber attacks going on. You know, it's almost like a damn uh, uh, a magic trick or something. In one hand, you're seeing something getting taken away. In the other hand, is really where the 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 the, uh, the item is. You know, it's, it's some wild stuff going on right now. So, who knows where these cyber attacks came from? You know, you know who they're gonna blame, right? A series of cyber attacks on Tuesday knocked the websites of the Ukrainian army, the defense ministry, and major banks offline. Ukrainian authorities said as tensions persisted over the threat of a possible. A Russian invasion. That lets you know. You, Ukraine ain't got sh- for, for Russia. If Russia can hack into their defense, their defense systems and their banks and knock them off, that war is pretty much over. That's why NATO has to step in. That's why NATO was stepping in. That's why the U.S. is in there calling the shots. Uh, And uh, this is why they got to bring in the big guns. Still, there was no indication that relatively low-level distributed denial-of-service attacks might be a smokescreen for more serious and damaging cyber mischief. At least 10 Ukrainian websites were unreachable due to the attacks, including the Defense, Foreign, and Cultural Ministries, and Ukraine's two largest state banks. In such attacks, websites are barraged with a flood of junk data packets, rendering them unreachable. We don't have any information of of other disruptive actions that could be hidden by the DDoS attack, said Viktor Zora, a top Ukrainian cyber defense official. He said an uh, emergency response teams were working to cut off the attackers and recover services. So, you know, it's still going on, man. Look, look at this crazy, bro. I mean, just, just, just when you think Esau couldn't do no worse. Just when you think you couldn't do no worse. Look at this. Mother who feeds her six-month-old daughter rare steak divides opinion as critics claim it's a choking hazard with dangerous bacteria. They're worried about the choking and dangerous bacteria. But but I'm, I'm not even going to no scriptures about Esau. If y'all don't know that this dude and his people and his nation... It's full of, you know, uh, fornication, debauchery, foolery, you know, savageness. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, even Job said he wouldn't let him sit with his dogs for fear of what he might do to the dog. I see. I said I wanted to go to scripture. I got I to gotta get that one out. Job 30. Mm, all right. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to set over Salaki, to have set with the dogs of my flock. Now, what are they saying, younger than I? Speaking about the so-called white man and his maturity, his understanding in regards to uh, his, his closeness to the Most High, the covenant being blessed Jacob, he's below us as it pertains to spiritual status on the earth, right? He said he would disdain him to have him sit with the dogs of my flock. How do we know it's a white man? We'll keep reading. Yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished? For what, for want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. See, when the so-called white man was completely destitute, had no land, no real recovery of understanding, of, a, of how to establish and set up a kingdom or whatnot, you know, being resorted to uh, the, the 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 um the caves or whatnot. See that that was them. For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. Who cut up mallows by the brushes and juniper roots for their meat? They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. See, that's the outcast of the so-called white man that became. Remember, he didn't come into power until post-Alexander the the, the freak. 
in 333 BC. Prior to that, man, the so-called white man was was subject to um, the dominance and the rulership of all melanin nations. You know, you had the you had you know the kingdom of Edom and and Mount Seir and Petra and all of that, but there was really no heavy factors in anything. That's why you read the Obadiah, tell you, man, everybody look at him or hiss at him and all of that. You know, he's been made low, uh, the, the, the lowly of the heathen. Base. Base man. But here's how we know. They get driven out, especially during the times of um, the Dark Ages in, 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 in Europe and um, the, uh, 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 the Crusades and whatnot. You know, the Ottoman Turks. Them having to get recruited in to fight in the wars, converting to Islam, converting to Christianity and whatnot, you know, to dwell in the cliffs and the valleys and the caves of the earth and in the rocks. See, that part he can embrace. Oh, yeah, we were the Neander Neanderthals. We were the original cavemen. Yeah, that, that much you got pretty much understood. Look, they were children of fools. Yay, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. That's a so-called white man. You talking about base, low level, knuckle dragon, slithering on his belly. You know what I mean? That's really what you're looking at when you're talking about the so-called white man. Children of fools. And now we're looking at a story of this this white woman. <laughs> So the children of fools, looking at the story of this so-called white woman that uh, has a nerve. And you know, when you're looking at this the, in, in the Hebrew, when you look at that basement, it, it's um, speaking about shame and violent in the earth. I mean, they, they have no shame. Look at this. Six months old, she's feeding her daughter raw steak. Katie Harley, 23, who lives in South Carolina, filmed her daughter eating steak, posting on TikTok, showed the six-month-old enjoying the meat. Medium rare, many responses found the clip relatable, while others warned against the food. I wonder who was warning her. <laughs> you know. Good Lord. She got 200,000 views on it. Here, here, look at this. Dripping, damn near blood dripping off the damn thing. With our unique tub over tub installation in just a day, Bath Fitter doesn't Come just on. fit your bath, it fits your busy schedule. Why have over 2 million people welcomed Bath Fitter into their homes? It just fits. Bath Fitter. Call now or visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Look at this. Thanks for the views. <laughs> hey, you talk about Esau, man, and him wanting that red pottage? Huh? For a little morsel of meat? He sold his birthright? Look. You can see the blood on the damn strap. Hold on. Damn it. I was trying to get that back. I ain't trying to see that again. I want to see that baby eat that damn meat again. Well, I can't see it. But, shoot. Where is it, woman? Whatever. Look at this. Disgusting heathen, man. But on the strap in the video, you can see the damn blood was, was leaking onto the damn strap. Look at this. Is that that leaking out her mouth? That's the heathen for you, man. That's why the most I said, man, learn not the way of the heathen, man. Stay away from these damn people. Oh, hold on. I just almost had it. Let me skip this. Hopefully they don't know. Come on, now. I won't even skip the damn ass. Satan, man. Come on. See, they locking me in to watch this bullshit. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Is it over yet? No. I don't have time for this madness. 
Look at I never in a million years would think that the video of my daughter eating would be so controversial. Why wouldn't you think that it'd be controversial to be feeding a six month old, let alone meat already? Maybe I'm tripping. I don't recall my kids eating meat at six months. Maybe they did. I don't remember. But they damn sure we eat no rest. Look at the blood. Look at the blood on the damn strap. You see that? Oh, shit. Missed that out there. See? Well, you see the blood on the damn strap, man. Unreal. That's what he saw for you, though. All right. Oh boy, let me get a couple more, and then I'm uh, I gotta break out of here, man. No jab, no job. One thousand four hundred twenty-eight uh, New York City workers are terminated for failing to follow the mandate. I thought they was calling it off. I thought the mask was coming off. I thought everything was back in order. No, no, they still pushing the mandates, man. They still telling the federal workers. They still telling the city workers, you're under lock and key. You're not getting off that easy. You're gonna fall back in line with the pandemic. We're going to make sure that that arm gets rolled up or else. See? So, 1,400 people in New York, man, lost their jobs because they're still strong and didn't want to take that jab. Uh, did y'all see this? This is the world's first reusable cotton swab. It removes Beautiful. up to five Cut times on. more excess your weapon. Hey, I don't mean to brag. This. I don't Look care, but I want you to know... Double-vaxxed booster. Stand-up comedian collapsed on stage after making a joke that mock you how shy. Uh-oh. And she's talking about she's double-jabbed, got her booster in the whole night, right? What else happened to her? Flu shot. And I'm going to be honest. I have the shingle shot, too. And I still get my period. What? Yes! Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Look at everybody laugh at it. Don't mean to brag. I don't. Oh, she says she don't mean to brag. She's double jab, boosted, got the shingle shot, flu shot. She says it's all in fun and jokes. She went to Mexico. Everything was good. Oh, and, and, and Jesus loves her the most, huh? Huh? And she fell and cracked her damn skull. What's it saying, Luke? Luke 6.25. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Not so funny now, huh, honey? <laughs> Not so funny now, huh? Look, comedian Heather McDonald out of the hospital. She literally busted her head. Comedian that wasn't no Heather joke. Heather McDonald is out of a Valley hospital tonight after she collapsed over the weekend during a show at the Tempe Improv. She spoke with Team 12's Colleen Socorro today about the frightening tumble. And Colleen, how is she doing? Frightening, huh? Wasn't funny, huh? She's doing better. Heather McDonald says she stayed at St. Joseph's Hospital over the weekend as they ran tests to figure out what happened here Saturday night at the Tempe Improv. She says, you know what happened? Double jabbed, boosted, shingles, flu shot. And then she had the nerve to try to mock you how shot and said he, he, he loves her the most. They don't really know why <laughs> she collapsed three minutes. Uh, we know why. All right. We're, we're done with you. Get out of here. But Heather McDonald, man, you, you got everything you deserve, man. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Now it ain't so funny, huh? Not so funny, huh, honey? <laughs> Let's look at this. It's another one. Yeah. Hold on. It's a German, German TV. She's uh, on the news. Pushing mandatory jabs. Mandatory mandatory jabs. She's promoting it on live TV, right? We'll watch her. Uh oh. <laughs> you all right, honey? You okay? What happened? 
Oh, uh, at this point, you want to get, get on to a different topic, huh? Well, she's not feeling well? I wonder why. German TV interviewer pushes for sooner enforcement of a general jab mandate, then collapsed live on air due to the climate change. <laughs> all of the madness is showing. All of the madness is showing, man. Thought y'all could use a good little entertainment laugh before I close out. So, we're going to keep our eyes peeled uh, for the events that continually transpire. Uh, as long as breath is in me and the most high continues to put the spirit on me to continue on with these don't shoot the messenger episodes i will do so most high willing this shabbat uh we'll do a friday night lights man take your naps take your naps get ready dstm 88 coming soon most high willing all right all praise honor glory to the most high man y'all have a blessed evening make sure you continually fear the most high keep the commandments and don't shoot the messenger shalom